All right, Josh. This is Mike. He is one year old. In his year, it started off at a shelter and then straight to foster care. So he's actually, this. he's on his first home. They've only had him two months. Um, he's completely leaderless. He's very insecure, uh, as you can see. Barking, growling, destruction. He's chewed through two doors. So he can't be in a crate. Um, they've tried, and he like bends the wires. He chews through it. Um, it'll bark for hours. Just, I'm sure the neighbors will love that. He's chewed through two doors. Um, they, like I said, they've had him two months. Um, the vet's answer was a shitload of trazodone and Prozac, so like drug him until he can't function. Sounds fun. Um, So he was like this at the drop off with me, not the barking, but the low growling. Um, I had to, it was, took some finesse to get him out of the car. He did not want to come out of the car. He was growling at me. Uh, got him out of the car, got him in the yard, left him to be in the yard alone. He was trying to jump the fence. Um, okay. When I came back out, I crouched down sideways and he did approach me, no growling, and sniffed me. Um, but yeah, he's a young dog that is in desperate need of some, some leadership. Did you have that? Mm -hmm. Um, he did nip a man at the cemetery who reached down. Okay. To pet him. Okay. And he's only a year, he's so. He's only a year old and, um, he's just been, he's been in the system almost the whole year. So, lots of, uh, no, pretty much no leadership at all. Nobody's taught him anything, no boundaries, no rules. And how long has this current? Two, two months, and they've signed him up. They've had him signed up since before they even adopted him. They said, we're adopting a dog. Yeah. Let's get it signed up for training. They've also signed up their five-year-old dog, who they've had since eight weeks. Okay. So they said, let's get both dogs. Yes. Fully Very trained up. Yeah. I have both dogs on for four weeks. Good. I told them if we need more time, we will let him know about this one. Okay. So this, this guy is the one that's biting. Yeah. So the other dog, they were just like, we, we just never saw the need. He's like, he might pull a little bit, but. Yeah. It's good to get them both on. Yes. But, but this dog, the rescue actually made them sign a contract saying you will get training for this dog before you adopt it. Hmm. So. Well, that's uh, really responsible, to be honest with you. So yeah, I had to sign a paper that says you would sign up for our program. Um, yeah. and, and we see why. If you adopt a dog like this and don't get any training, you're going to be returning Something's it. Gonna yeah. <laughs> Something's going to happen. I might. I might. And the rescue doesn't want the dog back, so they say you've got to get a training. Mike is the name that he came with. So Josh is basically testing consent. We're not going to reach down and touch him. We're not going to pet him. We're not going to reach for his face. That's how you get bit. If you want to test consent uh, for a dog, whether or not they want to be pet, you do exactly what Josh does and let them come to you. We'll let him sniff Reagan's hair. He has gotten into some scuffles with the housemate over toys and bones. I'm just taking the pressure off him by interacting with the other dogs. I'm just getting to know him. Josh said he's taking the pressure off Mike. He's taking the spotlight off Mike by interacting with the other dogs.
a neutral or a positive experience before I get started if I can. Notice the barking did stop. The barking stopped. We I corrected cracked, it with I the e collar. A couple. The barking and non stop whining, too. And that's his go to on the mat. Oh, yeah. I mean, what I was seeing was pay attention to me. Get me off this tie back. Not, I'm scared. I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I wasn't seeing that. I was just seeing, like, I'm used to people giving me the center of attention. Mm, more like a demand. Part. Demanding bars. And then he got with me when I came on the stairs. He yes, back. definitely stranger danger. This is a dog who's been left for a year without any guidance and basically just said, let's see how he turns out on his own. And that's where you see barking, growling, insecurity, separation anxiety, not listening, pulling, jumping, counter surfing, everything. It's, it's nobody ever told him not to. So that's what he was going to become without any sort of interference from anybody. Leaderless. Leaderless. Liability. Definitely a liability, and they're lucky that person didn't file with the state of Maryland. <laughs> All right, Mike, here we go. We're going to get here, okay? Mike. Starting with the recall. So basically, Josh is tapping the tone, giving the verbal COME paired with the hand signal, and then if he does not listen, which is pretty obvious what Josh wants, the stim turns on, and it's going to stay on until he gets to Josh, and then it turns off. So what he thinks is his safe space is no longer the safe space. It turns off when he gets here. That's going to be the new safe space. Hi, Mike. Mikey. Mike. I just got off the phone with my uncle, Mike. <laughs> no joke. That's good. Hi, how are you? See how that works? And that's how we just moved a dog from point A, who was barking and growling at us, Mikey. to point B, all hands oh, free. Oh, my God. You've been through this process before, right? You get to home. I told his owners, it's like playing a slot machine with him. He could either respond beautifully, or he could say, I don't like this at all. I don't want anything to do with you. It, it just depends on his temperament, how he takes corrections. Mike, mm -hmm. are you feeling okay? And we're going to keep getting reps in. I'll move away from you. I'll we'll practice like this. Yeah. Verbal, hand signal, tone, stim, turns off when it gets to Josh. Good. We, we celebrate him even moving forward an inch, basically. Because he is really insecure. We have to show him there's nothing to be worried about right here. As it gets farther mm -hmm. away, it goes up. He comes back, it goes down. Mm. Mm. There we go. See how that oh, works? Boy. And he walks past him and he's going to start over again. What do you think, Mike? Mm. Josh is making this look really easy, but this is not. This is taking a lot of finesse. This is a dog who is a big bite risk. Big bite risk. Um, and it's not an easy case. I knew from the second they filled out the form and sent it to me. That's good, Mike. And you're a big, strong boy, too, and you're only going to get bigger. Huh. And we're no strangers to pities. No strangers. They're so very emotionally pitties. sensitive, but they also have a big prey drive. They can be stubborn. And they're game. Yes, they're game, and that means, like, what Josh is saying is, like, they can go very primal. Yeah, they don't tend to back down from confrontation. That was a conversation right there. Yeah, Josh, went, Josh went to adjust his leash, and uh, Mike turned his head pretty quickly towards Josh's arm to bad. an untrained eye. You know, it looks like nothing, but to us, it's like, oh, like, he's telling us, I don't really like you up there. But the way I reacted, you took the pressure I, off. I uh, but I kept my yes. Um, we had a little conversation. He he kind of 
threatened me slightly, and I showed, and I said, I'm not worried about that. You know, the way I didn't, you know what I mean? Um, but I didn't put pressure on him unnecessarily, but I stood my ground a little bit. Right. And just felt, wow, we made eye contact, and <laughs> now it's undoing this. Weird thing. <laughs> He's sitting on your knee. He's got a scar back here. A little bit of hair missing. Yeah, he's been in the system. Mike, <laughs> Mike you put your butt on him. Yeah, I mean, it makes for a boring video unless he attacks me. Um, because he's too insecure. Just, I'm not doing much. <laughs> he's too insecure to do that. But a lot actually is being done. Yeah. Relationship-wise, and a lot of this is going to come down to the relationship. So here comes the recall again. Yeah. Verbal hand signal. Tone, my stem. Nice. And he's getting away with. We're asking for more commitment here. Yeah. Yes, Anna's around here, so I'm gonna have to put a little turn on the call. Tom. Mike. Mike. Come here, bud. Mike. Come here. Is that it always turns off right in front of Josh. This dog's been left to make too many choices of his own. For too long. And Even they, a year is too long. They become primal. <clears throat> yep. And, yeah. and basically the foster is just saying, I'm keeping him alive. I'm keeping him alive. Yeah. I'm keeping him safe. But we're not concerning ourselves with any behavior. Well, I mean, because you're going to have to have some time. Listen, you're going to have to, unless the people who got him as a puppy did it. I'm Once sure. Once it's over six months and they're already acting like that and, and getting close to a yep. year, it's dangerous. Yep. And so For sure. He's gonna make you go through conversations. Of course. That nobody wants yep. to go Yep. Or else, you know, what his now family has had him for what, two months? He's chewed through two doors. He's nipped at a stranger. He's gotten a fight with the other dog. Like that that's all in the span of two months. Oh yeah, and the only worse things are coming. Yep. It's only a year. Is he even a year? He just turned a year. Mm. I said, thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm making some all the choices here. Because he's talking about writing. Yeah, right. it took me some finesse to get the harness off, get that on, and get the collar on. Yeah, he's uh, very insecure. Everything that I learned from Josh. If you do this for eight years, you learn, you learn some stuff. I need some adjustment on some of these problems here. But look, the growling's gone, the barking's gone, the whining's gone. We've got him moving around the room, hands free. Like a lot is happening in this first session. Look at Freddie and Riggins, the OGs. Oh yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> they were around at the beginning. That's yep. funny. You know what they're doing? Young men. All right. So you've definitely got him looking at you for like, okay, so this guy has some relevance. You know, he's able to move me around. He's able to influence my movements and my behavior. Like, maybe I should pay attention to him. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Still dangerous. Very. Yep. Very. Uh, I mean, he's only a year, so that does come, does help a little. But uh, I really wish that we got him. You know, this guy needed it from five months the old. Day he came. Four months into old. The house. <laughs> yep. You know, eight weeks when they say, "Here's your puppy." Yeah. You need to start getting it right. I mean, dogs aren't all. I'm putting pressure on here. Dogs aren't all giving the the same uh, fair shake yet. Nope. Just like us. So he didn't get a really good start. Well, he can't take his eyes off of you. I'm going to keep this in my hand. So I have this to protect myself. If he goes to bite, he can bite this. 
Yeah. It's a shoot toy, you can bite it all he wants. I just don't want him to bite my hands. Good. Okay. Oftentimes if they get aggressive, I can just give them this and they'll happily tear it up. Yep. And then I can grab the That's what it's and, made for. <laughs> I mean, it just gives me a buffer between their their attack. Gives them something to bite. He doesn't know that yet. See, honestly. we couldn't even reach down and pat his head like that. No, a few minutes ago. No, he was. I, I could hardly get him out of the there car. There was going to be a bite. Well, he was more suspicious of me than you. Yes. Um, so, very insecure guy. He'll come around once he gets, once he becomes a follower here. Yeah. You know, I feel for him. By a follower, of, you know, Josh is saying, stop making your own choices and start looking at us or guidance on what you should be doing. And that really <laughs> takes the stress off his shoulders. You'll see that everything go away. The growling, the counter surfing, the pulling, the barking, the chewing doors, all of that go away. But this really is all about relationship right here. Mike. Mike, um. Verbal, hand um. signal, tone, stim. So information first, and then stim kicks in when it's like, you're not trying anything, start trying something. Try to come towards me, yeah, you know and the stim yeah. turns off, it turns back on. It's on, it's going down, and it's gonna turn off right there. Good boy, See how that works? Good boy. Good boy, that was awesome. Wow. So far, so good. He missed a lot of puppy lessons. Pitties are, good. they really, when they are dedicated to committing to you, they really, they go hard. Good you see job. that? They really connect with you. We're not out of the woods yet, though. No. Not with this guy. No, this they is going to be a big. Because it's, this is going to be a big project. <laughs> yeah, the potential of it being very bad is very high. Yeah. I see it going bad. Yeah. Not, I mean, not the training or the process. I, I, I see his life on this trajectory is on now. If they were to continue to go, let's so just bad. see what happens with him. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, three strikes are out kind yeah. of thing. Eventually, he's gonna, his life will be ended short because of inviting right. people. Right, and they uh, exchanged so information with that stranger that he bit, but, and that no, nothing ever happened, but, like, it could have been reported. Yeah, you know, you get reported three times, and it's like now he has to, you know, wear a muzzle. He can't leave the house. You know. Well, they eventually get put down. Yeah. You know, it's it's, especially if he gets a kid. Yep. You know, um, so people don't like that. It tends to not go well. So we'll see how, how what happens here to this training. There's actually a lot of um, remarkable dogs in the past that made remarkable changes. Like, yes. Just unbelievable. But we never promised anything like that. But. At the very least, we'll have control over it, yes. which will take the liability down. But I'm hoping for a deeper change. Yeah. We always go for that, and I'm thinking that you know, if he can, if he can learn how to be a follower, we can see that deeper change and see him, um, you know, hopefully have a good life and not have these incidences. But so far, what I'm noticing with a guy like this, you know, you don't want to get in the mindset that you're fixing a problem. Uh, it's, it's always kind of like a maintenance. It's like that with any dog, even with my guy over here who's not aggressive like that. You're maintaining a hierarchy always. Yeah. So it's not like he's fixed and then, you know, that's it. It's more like the people know how to keep it maintained. Yes. And, it, and that's just, you know, just the reality of it. He would make huge improvements. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. We'll see. Let's see, I'm putting more pressure on him here. Everything's intentional. I'm touching his tail. Every single thing Josh is doing is intentional to see his response. It's like a temperament yeah. test. Pretty much. And, and you know, if he strikes at me, then he's, he's starting a fight. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not going to start a fight with him. I'm going to do very simple things and touch him. Like if another dog were to interact with him, they go right for the rear. They'd be way more. Assertive, right? They put their head in there, you know. And then if he didn't like that, and we try to tell them to take a hike, and the dogs said, "What did you just say?" And now we have a back and forth. That's when it goes back to the foot. Okay. 
Yeah, if I just came in and did this, no, he would bite you. Process, yeah, he would bite you for yeah, sure. No doubt, he was already telling me. Was I like, couldn't even reach my hand in to get the leash off the carabiner in the car. I had to go around the back because I'm like, he's gonna bite my hand if I do that. He's already growling at me. I'm not gonna make any sudden movements by his head. <laughs> yeah, he's telling you. Mm -hmm. by the way. I'm going to bite you, yeah, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to get bitten today, so we're gonna do something different. I'm sure he's heard, the, heard those words before. Good boy, and then a pet. He's beautiful. He is really beautiful cute. Beautiful boy. Good boy. Wow. Healthy. Wow, what a good boy. So Josh is touching his paws. Like I said, everything's intentional. We're not just doing this for fun. He's got scars on his face. Yep. Proud of dog fights. Yep. Like I said, he's been in the system for a year. Yeah, I'm sure there's been quite a few dog fights here, at least a handful. He's got some powerful jaws too. He's got some pity on him or something. Oh, I'm sure he's mostly pity. I'm sure he's mostly pity. And he's huge. Uh, yep, jaws. strong. He never wasn't a big fan of the paws being touched here. I'm a huge fan of that, but he's up to do it. Wow. Mike, you did it. Good job, Mike. I don't want to come across as, you know, I can already see him. He's been through the system. He knows the stuff. I don't want him, and he already kind of does, but I don't want him to see me as, like, a doctor or a vet or something. Uh, I want him to see me as a pack leader. Right now, I see, I'm riding that line where if, I, if I'm doing this stuff, he's starting to see me kind of like as a vet or, like, something like that. But... As the session goes on, he's going to say, oh, this guy's not a vet, this guy's not a doctor, uh, he's not, uh, what do they call the people that help him? Vet yeah, tech. Vet tech or anything like that. Yeah. He's going to be the leader of the pack. Yeah. So I need him to see me that way. Right now, I think he kind of just kind of started to see me kind of like a person in the system, you know, check yeah. him out. Well, he was so bad at the vet, they had to drug him up with Trazodone, so you're already doing better than the vet. Well, I mean, I wasn't trying to go down that road. I was yeah. just saying that I can tell he kind of sees me a little bit in that way. Yeah. Just maybe he's like appreciative that I'm able to talk to him clearly. Yes. Um, but I'm about to show him that I'm actually just the leader of a dog pack by bringing in dogs and pretty much going from there. Just going, going off what he gives us. Um, I might do a recall first though, on one of these doors if he gives me the opportunity. That, that perked him up a little bit, huh? He says, yeah, I like that the door's open, but I want that door open. Alright. You can do the closet too. Uh, you can do that, it's empty. Pretty empty. There we go. This is good work. See, even there, even after everything I did, it's still got a little... Yeah, it's probably association at this point. Yeah. Meaning, if somebody goes to touch my head, my immediate response, without even thinking, is to a quick movement up towards their hand. Yes. Which is very little, dangerous. Yeah. Um, but... I'll read on the temperament. This is what's going to get him in trouble. Insecure, dominant. Insecure, trying to be dominant. He's not meant for it, but he's trying to do it's, it. It's oh, a terrible combination. Yeah. Uh, because the insecurity is going to make him overreact. Yes. And, and that means everything, you know, a bite's going to be even more vicious, you know, or, more, or harder than it needs to be uh, because they're insecure, so they're going to overreact. So if they're insecure and dominant, this, this guy's both. They're kind of, you know, kind of the worst combination. You'd rather dominant, confident, you know, I believe it or not, because they, least, they react less. They're a little more They stable. only react when it's necessary. Yeah. He's growling at any stranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, right? Yeah, he's going to make some bad judgment. Dominant bad judgment. and confident would be only growling at an intruder in the middle of the night. Exactly. Something's off. And we appreciate a dog like that. Not the shoot. mailman every day. Yes. Not. Somebody your owner is talking to on the street. Every little sound, you know, or just, you know, somebody who's obviously, we've already, is not a threat, comes over and says, hey, nice dog. 
So you got insecure dominant, that's kind of the most dangerous combination, one of them, that I, would, that I run into. He wants to be dominant. If he was just insecure and submissive, we're not worried about getting bit so much. Yeah, I mean, you really have to try to get bit. And you can get some fear advice. You really have to try to get bit from by a dog like the that. The dominant insecure is going to kind of hold their yes. ground, but the insecure. Yeah. So it's, you can see how that could be a problem. And we see, you know, we see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of that. A lot less. Every now and then, you get an insecure, submissive dog. We get that too. Um, and you have to have your finesse for that. But the insecure dominant is, is tends to be the one that, you know, it's a little bit more dangerous. I feel like, you know, so because he's going to try to man up, if you will, and have conversations with other dogs. Probably, I'm imagining. We'll see. Definitely over resources. It's already, you know, happened with the housemate. And he says, yeah, I want to go out there. He was trying to jump the fence Everything earlier, too. Everything shut? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure the door is shut. Oh, yeah, he'd be a Spark flight risk. There, right? He'd be a flight risk. Okay, good. Spark is not on that. So I'm going to hang out there for a second, and then I'll recall him in and see how he goes with that. And then we'll get to seeing how he does with it on the dogs here. Okay. Here's the recall. He's just trying Verbal, to get, he's tone, good. stim. And then the, the intensity of that goes up and down based on his choices. Good job, Mike. Good job, Mike. Nice Mike. job. Mike. Good boy. Hey. And if he decides to walk away, it will repeat. Wow. So it's very clear to him. Good wow. job, buddy. Let's do this again. Okay, that was really nice. Nice job. That was really nice. Are we even going to get a sit? That's amazing. That, Mike. that was good. He's also more relaxed because he got to do the one thing he's been wanting to do since he came. He's Go out that door. <laughs> he tried it. Good. He cannot jump that fence. It's eight feet high. Good. There's no traction, and there's another foot and a half of lattice on top. Yes. <laughs> you have a better chance of smashing through it. Yes. He's chewed up remote controls. He's chewed up other things around the house. Break. Nice work. We have to also teach him the break command because I don't think they've ever had him hold a command long enough for him to actually be released from it. So the break command is even new to him. walking backwards and waiting until he commits, right? We took a little sniff of him there. That's yeah. a good thing. That was not random. He's sniffing him to take his scent and say, I might need to remember this guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah we noticed that. That's uh, exactly taking the scent. That little movement backwards and making sure they end up in front is really important. So that way, from the beginning, they're getting those, uh, they're getting the position right. You know, So we're not kind of letting them get away with all these different positions, and then a week later, say, just give them all these different positions. It's always straight in front. Good. If he goes to the side, I'll just shift and do another recall. Good. Good. Break. Nice job, Mike. Good boy. Yeah, hi. All right. Let's do some dog stuff with him. And do a little nervous of it. How many lives of him? He's shivering because he's holding himself back from running up to her. That's good. And the, the shaking is self-control. Right. right? He says, my first instinct is to run up to her, but I don't know. They might not like that. I trust his judgment. Good boy. Good boy. And Josh is praising him because he's like, good job. You're letting a dog sniff you. This is a good response. 
Nice job, Mr. Wow, Ringo's away. Good boy. You gotta kind of treat him like you're a little bit. Good. Good. Yeah. Good job. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. You did it. Good you're good. Good. Just a little. See, that's still in. We still got a little puff in there. There's still a little puff, and we're gonna. We're going to bring it out. Bring that out a little bit. Um, get him to loosen up a little. Yeah. Good. But they're also going to mature him. Yeah. But I see a little puff in there and I want to utilize that. Good. It's going to be gone very soon. Yeah. <laughs> Good. See, the pup part is curious. Yeah. The pup part still likes to be told, I am a good boy. Eventually, you know, they hit that adulthood and that pup part just kind of fades out and yeah. everything becomes more serious. Good. Good. Good boy. Different. He knows it's not a female. Baby dog. Good boy. Riggins is not concerned. No. Which is a good thing. Yeah. So far. He's also not. Riggins is so unconcerned, he's grabbing a resource to flaunt it in front of him. That's how unconcerned Riggins is about him. And he found out all that information by just tipping his rear end for a couple seconds. How amazing is that? To be fair, and yes, to be fair, Riggins also knows that I'm going to back him up. Yeah. So. True. And he's a little bit more. <laughs> or if he didn't have any backup, we might see a little more security at home. But yes, he is, this is telling me. They just did the same thing, they're not afraid of him. That's a good sign. They're not afraid of him. They also know, like Rubens knows, well, he thinks that he can take him if there was an altercation. So then all of a sudden he feels great. He's like, oh, I could dominate this guy. This is my favorite day ever, Rubens' favorite day, is when a young male that he feels he can dominate steps into the house. He's never been happier. <laughs> He's thrilled. Look so him. funny. He can't wait to just have these micro conversations like swanting the toy and walking, walking around. around like this. Yes. Make him feel elevated. Yes. Never happier. Never. The, the closest thing is just like good food. Yeah. It's that and this. This is his favorite. See the head over the body? Uh, oh, he wants to hump him so Riggins, badly. Um, Riggins stops himself from doing what he wants to do next. He wants to hump him. Because Bad. he knows I don't want that. Yes. That's it. If I was not here, he'd be trying to help. They're having a little conversation. Yeah, no, Riggins is holding it's, himself it's, down. Uh, it's altered by us in the room. If they were meeting in the wild, okay. it, would, it would be different. Riggins would try to hump that. him, and then the outcome would be determined by if he lets it happen or not. Yeah. So there would either be a fight, and then Riggins humped him, or he just lets Riggins hump him. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, hey, why are they doing that? Why is that built into that? It's instinct. Yes, why? It, well, because I think that's the way, I mean, it just it, it and that's forms nature's way of the hierarchy. making sure that they had that conversation, yes. right? And so that, there's a hierarchy. What does that mean? Whoever can get access to the resources, right? The, the, let's say the top dog out of these two will get access to the resources. Everybody's hungry. Food. There's a fresh kill. Who's eating first who's and eating who's first? eating the most? Who gets the, the comfy bed, or the comfy spot? Who gets the females that when women they're in heat? So then procreation takes place and the one who's most able to survive in the environment is going to depend right. on the genes. It helps the species. So that's why all this weird stuff put in there. And he wants to hump him. Yes. Even though it's a conversation of like I'm I'm up I'm above you. I'm above Don't you. even try. Right. And if you do try, yeah. I'm gonna shut it down. And Riggins will continue to do that until he's too old exactly. to do that anymore. Exactly. And then a new young dog will so take over. Yeah. Yes. Um, but you know, it's a hierarchical conversation. There's different ways to do it. They can do that one. He can do it over a toy. He can have a toy, make the other dog interested. The other dog come close. He growls. So don't touch it. It's mine. Another way of just reminding and, and maintaining and creating that hierarchy. So it's very concerned about it. Good. But you think about it this way. Once they figure it out and they become a pack, they'll know well enough if something hits the floor that they both want, like a big steak, one of them's going to let the other one have it first, right? Because they already know that if they're trying to go down that road, the outcome's going to be a fight, and I'm going to get my butt kicked. It's not worth it, right? Good. Good. But
But anyway, young dog, becoming an adult, Riggins isn't afraid of him. In fact, he wants to hump him. <laughs> She's not afraid of him. Nobody's concerned. That's good. Yeah. Doesn't mean he's not a liability. Doesn't mean he's not going to start fights. And doesn't mean he's not going to bite. Doesn't mean any of that. It just means he he's not leader material. You know, he's, he he needs a leader. And so and he's also not this big bad scary thing to the dogs. Right. This is good. Some dogs come in here. A rare amount. Even you Reagan's won't go near him. <laughs> we're like, uh, we're supposed to though. train this dog? Yeah. <laughs> but he feels loose already. Yeah, he does. He's more used to biting. He's very used to biting people. Or at least trying. Or, yeah, he's thinking about or it. Or growling. You know, I'll tell you what. He's and and growling it. is powerful because people back off. I certainly wasn't going to stick my hand in his face when he was growling at me. Yeah. Yeah. At least. All right. Yeah. Cool.